Okay, so I got some Top Gun stuff hung up here, so you can tell I was excited for this movie. I got the collectible popcorn bucket. I think I got it a couple of years ago when the movie was originally supposed to come out. In terms of the first Top Gun movie, yeah, despite how gigantic of a hit it was, and how truly iconic it is, and how much it inspired afterwards, it is a divisive movie, even at the time critics were mixed on it. But I freaking love the original Top Gun. I love the cheesy lines, the characters, the soundtrack, the Tony Scott magic hour sweat dripping from the film. It's one that when it's had theatrical re-releases over the years, I still try like hell to go see it. So I'm certainly going into this movie not just as a Tom Cruise fan, but a big fan of the 86 movie in general. And I can't tell you how much I absolutely loved being in the theater watching this and just getting chills at the fact that I saw the first one at five years old and here I am at 40 watching Top Gun Maverick and loving it every bit as much as I did when I saw the original. This is a film that should be studied on how to make a decades later sequel that blends in a real continuation for the story, maturity, reflection, and of course nostalgia. Not only do we see this very natural way that Maverick has grown over the years, but also the universe itself. And when you do have some characters that parallel the character types in the first, it doesn't feel like it's just simply repeating the first one. It feels realistic to the situation and what these people would be like in real life. Like if you were to go back to your college and you'd probably see some people there that might parallel you and your friends from decades past. It makes the throwbacks to the original feel earned, to the point to where they're even worked into the movie better than they were in the first. Like, yeah, instead of volleyball, we get this football scene. And of course it's a fan service moment, but it actually makes sense in terms of the movie's plot. There is a reason for it being there, whereas in the first, it kind of just happens. Even their mission is worked into the movie better, whereas in the first, the big mission comes in randomly in the last 20 minutes. Here, they set it up from the start that this is what they're training for and that this shit is dangerous. So there are improvements with the story, but not in a way that feels like it has some kind of self-hatred for the first one, or that it's knocking you for liking it or talking down to you. It's a very, very personal film that's a love letter to Top Gun, and also that era of blockbusters of the 80s and 90s. It's genuine about it. It's exactly what a movie dedicated to Tony Scott and with the Don Simpson, Jerry Bruckheimer logo in front of it should be. And just not enough praise can be given to Tom Cruise in this, who for a long time has put so much work into his stunts and the action sequences that he makes you buy everything he's doing in the movie, to the point to where Tom Cruise action movies are like documentaries on what Tom Cruise does on weekends. So it goes without saying how great he is in these action scenes, but also, it's a real dramatic performance he gives here. It's some of his best dramatic work in years. There's a natural maturity to Maverick here, and when it gets into his regrets and sadness over events from the first one, he's not sitting there moping or drinking or being burnt out. No, it's because with this story, it'd be impossible for anyone not to have to deal with these demons from their past. The rest of the casting here is just great. I've seen a lot of these sequels featuring older characters where the worst part will be the younger, newer characters. But here, no, I love their dynamic. They do their cheesy dialogue fantastic. And this dude right here is great. Like he was actually plucked from an 80s movie and teleported here. Which is funny because he was in Expendables 3, which had the problem of the younger characters being not so great. Also, John Hamm masterfully captures that 80s authority figure who, even though it's in the military, he's acting like the grumpy school principal. Jennifer Connelly and Tom Cruise have fantastic chemistry together, and they do a great job of making it believable that these two have known each other for a long time. To where she's almost written like this is a third movie, and she's coming in from a second one that doesn't exist. One of the best scenes is the one with Val Kilmer that has a tremendous amount of heart, and it fills in the gaps of what the relationship between these two guys has been like in the past few decades. It's also a heartbreaking scene in a lot of ways. 
The movie is a masterclass in cinematography, practical effects, stunt work, sound editing, and Joseph Kaczynski is the perfect person to direct a film like this. I really dig this director, and he did another Cruise movie, Oblivion, which I honestly thought was extremely underrated. Between the characters, the story, and the technical achievements, it gets away with there being a lot of cliches, because you feel their passion in the filmmaking and telling a story about these characters and putting them in these action scenes that are downright scary. It gets into just how physically dangerous some of this is. One guy passes out in the cockpit. When it gets to the climax, it is gripping. It's like an old-school Cold War movie and Star Wars. Hell, Top Gun Maverick is the best Star Wars movie I've seen in decades. Not only that, in terms of legacy sequels, it comes full circle for Tom Cruise, who was in one of the best legacy sequels, The Color of Money, back in the 80s, as the new younger character. This movie is easily an A. See it on the biggest, loudest, most thunderous screen you can, just like we did. It works so well no matter what you thought of the first. I know people who did not like the first movie who loved this one, and Laura went to see it with me, and she loved it without even having seen the first one. Plus, while you're at it, check out our Cinema Snob episode on Her Majesty's Top Gun. It's got nothing to do with Top Gun, it's a Bond knockoff from the 70s, but check it out anyway. See you next time.